we have a person from a very unconventional uh, and unfamiliar uh, sector of the film industry today with us. Hello, you, everyone. Uh, this is Mr. Hari Geeta Sadashivan. Hari, we sh usually have uh, every week a talk by some film personality uh, from some aspect uh, of the film industry, and it has been inspiring our students. But I came to know about Hari. Uh, through my student, Abhilash Babu. He is a very brilliant previous student of mine. He has contacted you also, Ab uh, Anand, if you remember. Uh, he made an anthology film on the play and uh, on the poems, the dramatic monologues of Robert Browning, uh, set in Kerala, in Malayal Kerala situations, in, uh, with people from contemporary Kerala society. And it was so brilliant uh, to see the you know, stories of Robert Browning from Renaissance Italy transported to our culture. Uh, and Hari is helping Abhilash uh, with uh, film festivals. And then I came to know about the great work that Hari is doing as a film curator. I'm really eager to know more about it. I'm sure this will inspire a lot of us who are present here today. Over to you, Anand. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kalyani. Uh, Hari, uh, as uh, she has said right now, the attempt of this, uh, the effort that we are making through this series, Let's Talk Film, is to introduce students to uh, different aspects related to film, filmmaking, uh, the art behind it. Because more, almost every one of them are literature students, so they are in a creative space. And uh, that's why uh, we are more excited to have you host you in this show. Uh, so. We have named it as Pacing the Story because the role of the editor is what we uh, would like to talk in detail. And as for you, Hari, uh, you are, you inspire us in many ways that like you are not just an editor. You are a film, uh, you play many roles that are related to the film and uh, film related first events. So we will come to that in later, but then to start with, uh, we will talk or start talking about your career as an editor. How did it all start? How did that remarkable journey begin? First of all, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you uh, for having me here. I'm really humbled to be in a space like this. But I, I, I can see there are a lot of people logged into the uh, session. Thank you all. Uh, to answer your question, it's, uh, there, was, there have always been an interest to cinema because my father used to watch a lot of movies and he used to take us at least one movie a week uh, in, in, in the early times and in, in my, my childhood. So when I, uh, when I was in, in, uh, in secondary school, I, I got to know about a person who's a, uh, who's a senior of, of my college I and mean, who, was, who was studying in Marivinus that time. Where, where I eventually uh, ended up having my degree from. So he introduced me into the world of cinema. So I, can, um, I can surely say he is the very first mentor uh, for, for my career. He once showed me the movie Cinema Parody. So I think you all know that film. And uh, that little boy got awestruck by watching that movie. I, I didn't quite understand the, the language because even though it had subtitles, but that's that movie actually made me think about that. I, I also want to make films like this or I, I want to be a part of filmmaking. And I, I didn't know anything about cinema that time, but I had this, uh, I somehow wanted to end up with film uh, in, in, in some aspect of film. So later, after finishing my schools, I, I applied for a uh, mass communication degree course in Mahari Venues. And that led me, uh, coming to Trivandrum was a very big turning point in my, in my life, in my personal life and career. I was fortunate enough to end up with eminent uh, technicians in the, in the filmmaking like B. Ajit Kumar. Uh, he was editing uh, uh, Adursa's films that that time he used to edit KP Kumar and Adur Adur Babalushan. And I think some of you might know him. He's not that popular, but he has won three national awards and several state awards. 
it was like a, a dronacharya egalavya situation i was i was living in 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 the, in the space where he had a studio and at night i i, I go go around to his studio and and watch him doing things and i had no idea how to use an editing software on a computer i was just learning bits and bits of film making and mass communication and later uh, after several months or so i started picking up a little bit little bit from him by watching him and uh, there was it was in 2010 and youtube tutorials were in that popular that time and we were a generation and at that 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 time it was not a common thing for us to uh go to youtube and learn things and nobody thought us there is a way that you can learn things from youtube so i picked bits and bits of information and and developed uh, a very basic skill of editing by watching him that's why how i ended up in this field if i start talking about how i started or how i began this journey i i might go on and on so i think uh, to answer your question this is how my journey started okay now uh, when you are at the editing table where do you start like a film is basically a director's art so you when you mention even when you mention uh, any talented editors or like ajit we are we are speaking about a film by adru gopalesh we are speaking a film by kp kumar mm-hmm. so basically it is a, a director's art yeah. so what is the role of the editor is it the is it the way in designing the story the way director wants it or where does the editor as an artist step in uh, generally speaking or, or uh, aesthetically or academically speaking uh, film is a director's art but doesn't necessarily have to be practically uh, there there are a lot of elements some for some movies uh, i'm not i'm not saying this because um, because i i i am so proud of my profession and all that this is a practical scenario some movies are actually born in editing tape uh, the script might be a different thing uh, the orientation of the director might would have been a different thing but certain films will have its real breath birth in in the editing tape so apart from that let's just uh, stick to the uh, question as film as a director sir the process of editing starts with obviously with, it starts with reading the script uh, the text textual instruct instructions of of a film and, and uh, most of the time the very early stage of a script is is a literature form is in is in is in its literature form it's a very basic text it doesn't have any technical information in that so we read the script understand the story understand the 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 intention of the director to how how to tell the story and the second and the very important uh stage of film editing is watching watching the footages uh, we watch the footages several times for a 2 hour movie we might have to watch more than 400 hours of footages i mean the number of takes there there will be a, a, a an editing script that uh, which directs us into what which shot is the okay one which is the ng one not good one we only have to see the good ones but still uh, for as as i have seen with my teachers and and, and my seniors and me myself do watch all the footages so uh, apart from reading the script when when we sit on the table when we sit in front of a computer we start with watching the watching the footages we watch it again and again and again and again so then the next uh, stage is ordering uh, ordering the footages so Uh, the uh, conventional way of ordering the footage is we order it first as day order so we'll be shooting uh, scene 7 and and it's 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 uh, four shot as the first day and the first shot of, of, of film making according to many scenarios maybe the actor is there only for that day maybe the location is only available for that day so uh, the shooting of film is not sequential it's 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 uh, it, it is done according to many factors so first we order the footages according to the day of shooting uh, day one they shot all these scenes and all these shots so uh, we make a day order first then we pick shots and scenes from the days and make it into a scene order 
first scene all these shots all these clips belongs to the scene one so it it, it comes here and then scene two and then scene three so the second order is scene order then within the scene we order the shots according to the shooting script there will be a shooting script saying this this is the first shot and this is the second shot and this is the third shot and this is the alternative shot for the first one it it, it could be a, a a close shot for a, a complementing a wide shot or a or a reaction to the dialogue of, of one person uh, who is in who's who's presented in in shot one so we order it according to the short order there is a short order and there is a short script uh, given to us by the assistant directors or the director itself which is which explaining which are the shots are good and which are which are the there'll be a clip name uh, on digital I'm, I'm talking about digital filmmaking if you all know there'll be a clip name for a shot uh, we shoot in a mobile phone or a or a dslr camera or anything yeah, basically name. basically the file name yeah the file name so that file name is a, is the technical address of that particular shot and that file name will be a file say for example say 001 zero file name 001 will be scene seven's first shot so we we place it there first shot scene seven's first shot then 0014 will be the second shot of that particular scene then so we we build a short order and that order when when we digitally do it that order is called a timeline or a sequence so that's that's when the the shape of the film is uh, is getting get, the film is getting shaped that that time when we can watch the whole thing and it will give us an idea of how the story develops how is it going and what is the approximate duration of the film then the next stage is actually editing that's when you start editing that's when you trim out the unwanted bits and you shuffle the all, shuffle all the shots and make sense with the uh, with the edit and uh, that's when you you ensure that the film is communicating enough communicating well that's when you sit with the director uh, all these activities before building a timeline necessarily director has sh shouldn't be there uh, we can do it alone or for the uh, practically there will be assistants or associate editors for an editor so they'll be doing all these activities at this point my question is like a doubt that came to my mind is uh, during the shooting time there will be many takes and there will be one okay take uh, yeah, one or take one that the, yeah. yeah one or two okay takes and but then there will be more takes that are not uh, okay according to the director or some something might be lacking so will you when you are watching when you are scene ordering it when you are ordering it ordering the scenes uh, shots yeah. will you go through all those uh, shots or will they be rejected or will you get any good moment from those uh, not okay or takes i do personally i am an editor who watches all the all the footages even even though it doesn't it doesn't appear on me on my okay shots bin i go through all the shots uh, there are editors who doesn't i mean who are busy uh, who are confident about the shooting script i mean or or, or their personal choice as a personal choice i go through all the shots i watch everything because i believe i i can bring something that nobody expected or nobody calculated uh, when they are shooting or when they are writing the shooting script or when they are uh, preparing the report i i always go through all the shots because and there there has been many scenarios that i got uh, brilliant things out of the bin out of the uh, materials that has been rejected and also um i have started my ca editing career as a documentary film editor i, I later became went into fiction films so uh, for a documentary actually nothing is uh, ng ng is a technical term we use for not good so documentary is a consisted uh, consists of interviews and uh, documentations or uh, the visual representation of the research so for a documentary nothing is irrelevant and also it's a very good learning process uh, if if i don't just necessarily stick, stick to uh, the okay takes and most documentaries doesn't have a script they, they don't have a script 
we we make we built the documentaries and editing table so personally i i watch all the footages and uh, and it, it 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 helps me most of the time yeah like uh, you just said that uh, that's your personal style so there is one thing that comes to my mind here is uh, you have worked with many leading editors of malayalam industry right now so do they have individual signature styles they work in the pace there or or is the pace of the film desired by the script or can the editor bring in their space pace to that narrative yes yes of course they do it, it uh, they uh, as an editor technically and as persons themselves they have unique styles uh persons themselves there are editors who work only at night there are there are editors who who stick to the office or official hours and it it all so uh, all these editors have a unique style and uh, for their working patterns and and it, and it shows on their edit it shows on the film so they all have a there are if you come to commercial industry there are editors who work with only gimmicks and and for the mass entertaining movies they have a style and uh, i mean they can edit other films also but i uh, i have made my career into the uh, into the industry as a documentary film editor then i become uh, i have edited more festival movies than commercial entertainers so uh, most of the seniors i've worked with also have that style their pace is different than a mass entertainer editor uh, if you if we take uh, sri gur prasad he has a style and uh, bina pol has a style and, and all, all those editors has different styles and their style and their persona can contribute differently into the film so you can sense that style from a film you're watching the film yes, even yes. without knowing who the editor is you can sense who is who style is this since this is in my profession and i have been following uh, the editors i can tell a bit yeah. I mean, not accurately or um, but i yeah, can i got it yeah. yeah even like you keep going back to your starting from documentaries but then your filmography is quite impressive like you have done 50 documentaries and 30 short short movies yeah. before uh, moving into feature films where you have done i think 10 10 feature films so far right yeah yeah uh, so uh, like uh, what one one thing that i found very interesting when you said that is like there are no no good so edgy shots in documentary because they have to work with the actual reality it's not a created situation they might be uh, shot on the go like there will be okay shots shaken shots blurry shots but then that is it then you cannot change it you cannot uh, set put the set out there and shoot it and plan it and shoot it so but then uh, off late malayala films have started uh, redefining its design and uh, they have more into personal like the uh, documentary style of film for example the avasa vihum film uh, where they uh, created a new style of film making yeah. yeah so so what is as an editor has you have been working from uh, 50 documentaries you have done short films that we'll come to that in late detail but art of editing short films where you have to say a lot of things in a very short period yeah. so the the change in change that is happening in malayalam films how do you view that how do you approach that if if i have to reply to that question with uh, in detail it just not one line of change there are several ways i mean uh, let's just take that take an example of avasi vihum avasi vihum is a very uh, unfamiliar genre it, uh, the filmmaker claims that it's a mockumentary we haven't uh, we haven't seen a mockumentary in malayalam we haven't seen i, I don't know if, if malayali audience are, are not fam- are, are familiar with mock in the concept of mockumentary at all so mockumentary is a style of uh, documenting personal stories with a bit of sarcastic element in order to tell a story which is a fiction but there are and and it is it is its impact is quite impressive because it can it can really uh, shake an audience into seeing a reality it might be 
telling a story very fictitious a uh, very unreal story but it it lets lets us see a, a harsh reality in front of us it might be socio political environmental anything so there is a way of evolution happening in that path and there is another way of evolution of film making and film editing happening in in other part that we are telling mass entertainment stories in order to sell uh a bit of uh inspiration in 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 real life uh to impact in in some kind of social uh, political uh, area and the the evolution of film making is not happening and the, the point is the point i'm trying to tell is the evolution is not just happening in one single path it has several it, it's like a spider web it, it, it is evolving into in this several uh, other branches but uh, quite impressively malayalam cinema and malayalam film making is is is, is growing and it is evolving it is adapting in a very fast rate since if i if i can if personally if i'm saying since the movie chapa kurish if you are familiar with that movie since that movie malayalam movies is, is rapidly changing and it is experimenting everything and uh, adapting to the world culture adapting to the it, it is slowly dissolving the rigidness and, and uh, of, of film making that it should stick like this it, a, a movie this concept or the genre should be told like this and there should be a star in in every movie and 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 we have we have far away from the vehicle star vehicle movies right now there are movies there are movies with with mohanlal mamuti and and uh, vijay and everything in in, in malayalam uh, but if we take these two actors i think most of these people are familiar with them, even though they are from uh, not from parts Kerala. of india yeah yeah they are familiar with these two actors 90% of the films made with these actors are star vehicle films though they are star vehicle films now there is a there is a trend that people are utilizing the popularity and 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 the strength of these actors to tell more unique stories like we see in kadal and uh, there is a film upcoming film called malikote valiban with mohanlal and it is it is nice it is nice to watch that evolution people are experimenting with the design yeah and the and the storytelling pattern yeah and they're kind of utilizing or in a way positively exploiting the the actors the, the fame and and then the, uh, the stature and, of the actors so yeah yeah carry uh, use the star work i like that phrase the star work that the aura of the star work can do something new okay so uh, what when it comes to editing short movies mm. uh, do you think that your uh, the role of the editor is restricted or or is it the other way around the responsibility is huge much larger than a feature film where you have to bring everything into a very small space mm, it depends for a feature film uh, the main difference uh, Uh, what i i have seen in my career the main difference is the bu- the budget the money for a feature film there will be at least proper budget to complete the film but for a short film it, it is a very different scenario uh, it could be a, a collective of people made a short film with no money at all it could be uh, there is a producer who wants to act and he spent 10000 rupees to make a 5 minute film and then that scenarios can change but um, most 9 or 90 or 95 percentage of short films doesn't have proper budget appropriate budget for the for the film making so there are restrictions because of the budget so they they wouldn't have uh, enough uh, assistance or associate director who who could charge the film uh, who the when my earlier days of film editing a trend that i have seen in in short film industry the uh, most popular mal- dialogue that i have i've heard from people who uh, approach me with the short film as in, in malayalam cheta namukku pattunadukke cheyidittundu ini baakiyukke cheyadanda kayilan it means uh, in the production yeah, everything that we we could yeah. do right? resist in your hands yeah so they all think the editor is a magician 
so they can uh, they can uh, fix everything in post there is a there is a saying and we can fix that in the post so that trend is is, is more seen in in the in the industry of short film making and i can call it an industry because in in kerala at least in kerala there are many short films that are happening and if you go to youtube you can see millions of short films there so uh, as an editor i have more freedom in a short film compared to a feature film because for a feature film we all work within a structure there there will be a proper structure for an editor so we just abide by that but for a short film i can take a bit more freedom because i have to because mo- most of the time i'll i'll have to uh, to conclude the the answer for the question uh, for a short film i have more freedom and uh, i can contribute a bit more it it necessarily shouldn't have shouldn't end in in positively or i can con- making the be- Uh, the farewell of the film but as an editor or a post production manager as to say in a short film because i'll be uh, for, or and an editor will be directing the other departments of uh, of post production like sound design grading vfx graphics and everything uh, for, but for a post for a feature film there will be another person who is a post production manager but for a short film because it it lacks a lot of budget and lot of technicians the editor will be the post production manager so uh i like editing short films because i have more freedom in that and i i can bring uh some of my contribution into the movie and uh, make it some way better right as a teacher of english literature i would like to ask you something in our uh, literary criticism in our approach to literary texts we have an author centered approach uh, in the beginning we had and then we said the author is dead uh, the reader centered ap- approaches uh, took over and uh, in movies also we had the author theory where the uh, director and his uh, personality his idea ideas could be presented in the text and the text was the vehicle of the author and his views uh, in today's world uh, i think that is a by gone theory it, we don't uh, look for the author in the text anymore except when the author or the director is a very famous uh, world famous man or a very high profile artist uh, what, what is the exact combination that sells what are people looking for is it socially reflective uh, movies that work or is it um movies with a cause there are all kinds of uh, movements within the parallel cinema industry as well as in the mainstream industry uh, there are many uh, parallel cinema people small independent filmmakers moving into the mainstream also sometimes because the mainstream has become more, more porous and it takes in more uh, experiments than before um what is the current trend that works and if some of our students want to make movies they have already worked in movies some of them are uh, people who have tried their hands at direction uh, what would you tell them is the current trend what are the you know um, formulae that work yeah um uh, it's a very complex question and uh, and and the answer would also be um so the it all depends on the audience we have bench audience there we have intellectual audience there the, the pool of audience is is a, is a very wide pool there are a lot of people uh, you can't just commonly address a bunch of audience as intellectual audience or they they all want uh, typical entertaining masala movies they all they all want to see their favorite actors on the screen we can't really say that if we just take uh, our country as an example our country is is, is known in abroad as bollywood in general because very few people who are uh, really film enthusiastic and they they who watch the film festivals closely they know the bengali industry the marathi industry and very few know the malayalam industry also but the our country is often portrayed as bollywood industry the bollywood industry is, is very personally if i say they don't make good films in 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 a in a big amount they all have uh, the the majority of films they make are 
are entertainers which uh, which which are money oriented and and money intended movies so our uh, our majority pool of audience is is kind of conditioned to see that kind of movies but when we take uh, bengali films marathi films malayalam films and and tamil films also so as as a trend of making offbeat movies uh, which can uh, succeed in 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 in, in theaters like pari pariyerum perumal and, and uh, ki- that kind of movies so the trend is always changing and there is not if you think what is the audacity like what is the uh, I I'm, 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 I don't think I can authentically comment on this but what I think is the trend is always changing it it can I, I I would like to modify my question and ask you this then uh as a film curator would you be able to uh take the movies to the right audience is that what you do yeah. uh, is it even possible uh, how yeah are there different uh, platforms where Uh, different audiences can be catered to um, is 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 that how it works essentially as a film curator that's my job uh, I, i the job is to present the movie the right movie to the right audience but um being a standalone an individual uh, film curator uh, i i i actually struggle to do that because if uh, if we take a film if we take a parallel film which is brilliantly made but it doesn't have any actors or doesn't have any uh, technical qualities which which it is required to be presented on a box office but uh, it is a good good film the only way i can make that film uh, public or i can i can bring that film to the right audience is is by sending that to film festivals across the world so uh there are a lot of ways that we can send films to the uh, different festivals across the world and the other thing is conduct film festivals locally and conduct screenings locally but it requires a lot of legwork manpower uh, and, and and a financial support most of these these parallel movies struggle to make it into the uh, general public or box office because they lack money that's a very very huge thing so as a curator who only works with parallel films or festival films to say i really struggle to uh, bring these movies into the right audience but i try as I try my best as i can i i i conduct like three or four festivals film festivals across across the state i i work as an artistic director uh, for a festival uh, every year i try to bring Uh, good movies into that festivals because i have the authority there and uh, uh, like the movie we said about abhilash your student abhilash uh, we we try to contact local screenings uh, at, at institutes at, at colleges because it, that's the right audience for that movie that's the job that's a job but uh, it is not it is not going well uh, in our industry because our industry uh, it all depends on 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 money if you say if you see only that aspect we all we, we need money to do a lot of things we can make good movies in a, within a collective but uh, to to make it reach into the right audience we again need uh, another we again need resources uh, so the like the question is uh, when you are curating a film festival uh you, you you i i noticed that you pointed out that some sort of films are you you have the audience also in mind mm. like a film of uh, academic interest will be was suited for a college a screening at a college or a festival at a college whereas a film with uh, commercial elements will be a, 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 will work with a common audience where, where you are organizing a festival for common audience so uh when you are curating a film festival what are things that you consider do you take into account the audience or the their their exposure to good films or the type of films they are expecting so do you get that feedback do you collect those feedback before you curate the films um curating a film 
to festivals is a different thing and and programming a film festival is another thing so when i work on i i have i have had the opportunity to work as assistant programmer for the iffi international film festival of india and i've been working for the past 11 years in the iffk i international film festival of kerala so when i work with film festivals which are bigger film festivals they have a they have a style they have established a style for iffi they it has a style iffk it has a style so when programming for film festivals uh we really we really don't care about the audience we care about the films we care about the good films which are produced within that year span uh we uh, we ask with curators not like me bigger curators uh, experienced curators around the world for their for their suggestions and uh, we invite films in the competition sections so we'll we'll have a collection of up to uh, 400 600 films a year and we pick only 160 150 between between 150 and 200 films for the film festival so uh, for programming for a film festival as a film programmer uh, for a big film festival we really don't have to care about the audience because the audience know how this film festival is going to be and uh, the delegates who are attending to the film festival will will know how, what to expect from the film festival but when it comes to a smaller festival like a uh, very local or regional film festivals we conduct every year around ac- across the state mm. uh, there is a film festival in kollam uh, a nearby district it, it, it is called kif koilon international film festival it is organized by the youth commission and the kerala university union so they are students they are uh, they are the majority of the audience are students and they are comparatively uh, little students i mean they are they are all in uh, degree uh, degree students and pg students and we have to account for their emotional maturity or their appreciation sense of the movies when if he introduced a, a movie of godard into the uh, into these audience uh, people might not be that interested to watch a movie of godard or fassbinder or uh, herzog but we can introduce tarantino films to them and 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 make their way to world movies to watching or appreciating uh, world movies or uh, and we can introduce films like bicycle thieves or cinema cinema paradise or that kind of films will work within them they wouldn't be expecting that kind of movies but we can uh, capture their attention by introducing world movies but a bit of entertainment in that so uh, there we have to come uh, a few ladders down uh, to think about the possibility the po- plausible possible audience the probable audience of the film festival and the other thing is curating a film for the festival that i i think i have answered uh, that question in kalyanis uh, so there uh, because there is a huge difference between curating a film festival and programming a film festival you have explained it uh, really well but then my question is uh, when you are programming a, uh, a festival which is not film festival per se nif as in iffk you have been associating with the madhurumi international uh, festival of letters the ka festival so where does uh, what is your role there as a, a programmer actually uh, uh... uh i am i am a jack of all trades so i i do very different things at very different industries and very different uh, events so for madhubumi film fest madhubumi festival of literature i had one role which is closely associated to my area which is films that has been uh, curating the black box there is a new, there is a venue called black box where which where we show films so every year we have will have a topic uh last year it was poems films about poems and films made from poems and films about uh, poets and everything so uh there it is it is the same i i curate fe- festivals i i bring fest- films which is closely related to the topic to the to the event and the other job was uh, for the 
for the festival for the literature festival was completely different which is uh, associating with the other programmers and curators we make sure that this uh, orator or writer or author is, uh, is present in the festival they are they are right on time uh, for their session and documenting these sessions documenting these sessions both in in in, in its trans transcript uh, uh form and and the video form it is completely different it, it has nothing to do with films so um i had a team of 60 people last year they were session producers which they 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 go they attend every sessions and they make minutes of every session what are the questions asked what have what have they said in the in the sessions and which helps uh to make a library of these sessions and the information shared by the authors and the and and, and the curators and the uh, moderators in in the session and we also uh, video document every sessions so what i've done last year for the madhubhumi festival is i have made a text library of every sessions and which is closely connected to the video library so if we if we want to uh search and and see what shashi tarur has said in this particular session about this particular topic we can just go to the transcript and find the time code in that particular video so you can go to that video and and uh, get the video clip of that particular uh, statement he he made that was the main job uh, for me and others uh, comparatively uh, smaller jobs was uh, uh, coordinating the public relation activities of the festival and making PR. Yeah, meeting. hello. Uh, so, uh, Aranya has a question here. Aranya, are you online? Um, uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, Hari, sir. Uh, so, uh, I was just curious that earlier you were mentioning that uh, you started working with documentaries. Um, uh, so, uh, in fiction, I understand uh, that the editor's uh, roles like the major role is in the post production of course but i am just curious that uh, is the is the role of the editor in the pre production stage as well and if it is how much uh, involvement is there with the team like that necessarily have uh, doesn't have to be it's up to the director or the, or the or the filmmaker who is going to make the documentary if if he or she uh, intends to uh, include the editor in in, in its pre production will be there and we can uh, we can make a lot of difference in, in the shoot uh, or the production but uh, it doesn't have happen that often for the feature films for the fiction it is happening more more and more these days because uh, films has, has been evolved into a very technical uh, thing these mm -hmm. right for a documentary uh the major pre production uh, area is is the research so a technician has doesn't have any big role in the, in the research but if, when we are planning the shoot and and what to shoot what to take and how to approach if for um there is another genre called docu fiction i think you exactly the ones that are very famous on netflix these yeah, days right? yeah. That way of filmmaking, then obviously the the role of editor is is, is quite contributing uh, when he is approached uh, approached on the pre production stage. So we can we can decide we can we can discuss and decide how to craft these fictional area of these documentaries. Like uh, uh, if that the original true story has been told to a told to an editor. Hmm make real contributions to how how to craft this fictional area of a of a, of a docu fiction so right. but uh, uh, in our country or in in, uh, in in especially in malayalam it doesn't happen often but, mm -hmm. uh, for a as you said for a netflix kind of docu fiction uh, the role of editor in the pre production stage can really contribute uh, to the the whole project right sir Thank you, sir. Yeah. Like, does that also mean that the editors, the directors, have to be accommodative to take suggestions from the editor in the pre 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 production stage? Yes, yes, yes. The, he's, he's ultimately the the highest authority is is, is the director himself, director or herself. 
so uh, we get our chance in the pre production only if the director decides to yeah then uh, i go back to something that you said earlier where the in the short film uh, usually we, uh, the main constraint will be the budget there will be uh, shoestring or minimum budget uh, and production material and that is left to you for the editor to create the magic out magic uh, switch the magic wand and make a film out of it so yeah. when when you are given a project like this with minimum rushes in your hand how do you go about it oh that's kind of a logistic creative nightmare for an editor but most of the times after a after long hours of brainstorming which is really interesting for me Uh, because uh, i i like that process i really like that process because most of the time this happen with inexperienced uh, filmmakers so uh, i'll be the elephant in the room <laughs> so so, uh, so that that process is is really uh, so uh, when there is a very minimum footage which is uh, if if you if we don't have enough footage to tell the story no magic one can have make have make anything happen but the technical quality so for example a wide shot it has been very poorly uh, choreographed and very uh, poorly composited i can scale that shot up to a bit and, and make a better frame out of it so and uh, there is a very wobbly shot i can stabilize that shot a bit and or give a bit of slow motion to that and 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 make it a better shot that kind of technical interventions really help the film and uh, but uh, in 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 terms of storytelling uh, i can do very little but sometimes if there is uh, a variety of footages is there which which can give me another angle to the context i can make something happen uh with the with this editing skills so but it, it, it's different in, in every film uh, we can mm-hmm. we can set a standard for that some films lack okay. uh, technical qualities of uh, visual technical quality some lack audio quality some some has poor audio some has very poor shots and uh, some doesn't have a, a proper order in the film in, in, in the shooting it depends it depends on the film but um mm-hmm. but uh, once it is shot and they have ran out of their budget and they can't do a reshoot anymore or they can't bring those actors uh, once again uh, the only option is left to make something happen in the edit and, and that's quite challenging and uh, <laughs> most of the time we 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 somehow wrap the films and and, and make it something I asked where there have been instances in your career where you insisted on a shot being reshot uh, so that that's the only way to save the narrative yes yes yes, yes. there 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 are many you, you asked the director to get a better shot yes 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 and there were many incidents that we had to shelve the films because okay. they lack in, uh, enough shots and which mm-hmm. there there were at least more than 5 films that the director and the and the whole production team thought that they can make a film out of these footages and when they approached me and i watched the films and i shot them there is no possibility to make a film out of this you can you can have a film from these footages so either you have to reshoot everything or you have to uh, shelve the project there were many incidents like that and there were more than 5 or 10 uh, films that we had to shelve or uh, just or our i withdraw from the project because uh, because i can't do that much of magic in 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 that way. okay so here yeah nidhi nidhi has a question here i think it's connected to what we are speaking right now nidhi are you online yes sir uh, good evening sir uh, i want to ask that can you suggest two or three films in which you have worked as an editor or like that are close which are close to your heart uh, which we can see um for the feature films it's it's, it's it's kind of dif- difficult because i i all always I, the films the feature films that i worked was festival films i can personally share those films but you can't find them online or or in any ott but definitely watch avasi vivam that, that's a film i worked 
work with. Uh, if, if you haven't seen that, definitely watch Awas of Yuham. And uh, if you want to watch uh, the films that I've edited, I can. I think I can personally share the Vimeo links and uh, the links of the movies. Yeah, sir. So please do that because uh, because we know that we have entertainers' films like to see, but uh, as you say that there is lack of audience. So like to create that awareness, we want to uh, we want to see the, the those films or be the part of them. So please share. Sure. Definitely share. Also, I'll. I think uh, if you are interested, I can prepare a list of uh, parallel films which are not so popular, but you, but you, which uh, which you can find in online or um, that I I suggest, which I recommend you to watch. I can make a list of films like that. Yeah, and sir. I, please do that, please. Yeah, Harry, like you can share that list with me because we have a film appreciation session. Like we watch classic films and we just talk about this so we can discuss all these films there also yeah, yeah. even though they and uh, go for classic films or or off offbeat films uh, if for a general public to watch those films that film has to have a, a basic popularity at least or it, it should it, mm -hmm. it should be on an ott platform or it should be on youtube but then there are many films which you can't find online, which are good films, which are really good films, which end up within the hands or hard drive of a curator or the filmmaker. So I think we can we can create a platform for films like that uh, for people to watch, at least in, in, in the people who are presented here. Splendid, splendid. That's a beautiful suggestion. Uh, Anjali, Anjali Vakumare, do you, are you online? You can ask a question. Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Angelique. Uh, my question is, uh, there are movies based on uh, real uh, person's life story. Uh, although it's uh, the true stories, but uh, they are a little bit fictionalized. Mm -hmm. But documentaries, I think, uh, uh, show the most reality, harsh reality. Is it true, sir? Yeah, of course it is. Because, it, because for a documentary, um, there is a very recent documentary in Netflix, it's called Curry and Sign It. It's about an incident happened in Kerala. So it's an ongoing police case. For a, for a filmmaker to cap, to make a documentary inspired, uh, on the context of documentary, it, it, the inspired from a true events doesn't stand because uh, it, sh it shouldn't be an inspiration. It should be a documentation of real events or, or retelling the history. So for a documentary, documentary should be documentation of real incidents or real lives or, or history. It should be, it should, it should be portrayed real things. You can, you can, uh, you can depend uh, the, uh, the technicalities of fiction to tell a story which is real, which should be real. The story should be real. There should be an authenticity to, to the story you're, you're telling to, through a documentary. At, unless at, otherwise it, it's a, it's a misleading information there are documentaries which which you can watch in history channel which which they claim that aliens are true are real and uh, there are they have, they have been spotted ufos and everything they claim to be real but they are misinforming the audience but so technically or ethically a documentary should say should be about truth it, it should say uh, real incidents as it is yeah yeah thank you sir uh, that's why we can use uh, in the uh, research as a, a reference yeah yeah you, no, sir. like you publish a uh, a paper you should you should uh, present your uh, references in the end and then the bibliography in the end uh, for a documentary uh, also you have to you you have to cite your sources and uh, uh, or the the people who are living uh, with who are who has some relations with the story or the the concept we we shared in the documentary can can sue you can can file a suit against you so and also the the public can identify that the, the thing you said in a documentary is is not true and the filmmaker can be cursed because of that thank you thank you sir yeah so like it's been an interesting journey talking about your career 
Harry, like you have opened up so many possibilities of being an editor. Yeah, Nidhi, you have one more question. Please go ahead, Nidhi. Uh, sir, I want to ask that if we want to enter in this world of making documentaries, what all are the basic requirements? Like, what all it needs to start with this process of making documentaries? Any suggestions, okay, sir? If, if I answer very informally, you just need a camera to enter into documentary filmmaking. You don't have to have a script. You don't have to have a story. You don't have to have a producer. You don't need actors. You don't need anything to make a documentary. If you see a person. Who's dumping garbage in your in your neighborhood every every single day, and who's not uh, listening to the authorities or the neighbor the, the people in the neighborhood? You can just shoot that process with a couple of shots, which is happening. You can you can you can shoot them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and and and, and Saturday, and just you don't have to show his face, and you juxtapose every shots and and put the title Monday on Monday's footage. Put the title Tuesday and Tuesday, and and as as on, and and you and you stitched all those seven days together. That's a document. One thing more, sir. Like how we can contact you, uh, like any email address or something. If you if we you we want you to work as an editor with us. Yeah, sure. I think Anand can help you with my contacts and. Okay, sir. Yeah, yeah. We can we can we can share the details where you can get in touch with Hari Nidhi. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, like uh, um, uh, Hari, we had uh, uh, Don Palatra as our guest in one of the lectures, and where there he explained how he made that everything about about film, uh, which was made out of random sh shots that he had uh, recorded during the COVID period. Then he made a film out of it. So when you are describing this thing, that I was reminded of what Don told us. Uh, Ayushi Mittal, Ayushi, are you online? Uh, yes, so good evening, sir. Uh, I was asking if there could be cuts and editing suggested by the director or the uh, cinematographer, a, even in such documentaries, due to any political issues or uh, the uh, public opinion. Yeah, there are scenarios, even though there is not uh, imperatively uh, because of public opinion all the crew members can make suggestions if they're valid and if they make sense they can make suggestions to the edit and we can work accordingly and we there are scenarios that we have to go back to the editing table again a film is released or 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 ready to release uh, we have to cut down a particular shot or for a documentary we have got a, a more important interview from another person after the uh, the process of uh, editing is completed so we have to go back to the editing and and stitch even that. after its release uh, you have to do that yeah there are there are scenarios for a feature film for commercial films okay. there are scenarios that uh, the uh, court has been intervened to to trim out some shots which is uh, problematic or making some uh, issues in the public or uh, for a film for like uh, recently, there is this director in the Tamil who is making mass films. Il, uh, I don't know. I don't remember his name. But uh, as public opinion, as a result of public opinion or as a result of court interventions or as a result of box office failure or uh, as a result of box office success in and if there is a person who's, who's had a cameo role in the film and, and the people really liked his performance, and somehow, fortunately, the filmmaker had more footages of or, or more screen time of that particular actor in his hand or in his in, in, in his disposal. He can uh, go back to the movie and add more uh, more of his screen time to the film and re-release it. But there are many uh, clerical and technical things that has to be cleared before uh, re-releasing a commercial movie. You have to re-censor it. Uh, you, you have to go back to the censor board and 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 make an what amendment. About documentaries. For a documentary, we you can do that freely. But if it is already appeared on a public platform, we have yes. to uh, uh, you have to recall it. I mean, you could call it back and re-upload the move uh, the new version. That doesn't happen oftenly. But uh, if a if a film appeared on Netflix and uh, it there are some shots or some areas created and inflict, inflicted a, a problem in the society. You definitely have to remove that and and re-upload the film or or your 
your film might get rejected from the uh, from the platform okay so thank you so so thank you hari for the long conversation that we had because you as i have told earlier you have opened up the immense possibilities that goes well beyond the uh, what we knew as a editor film editor you opened up the possibilities of a film a curator or a programmer so and as you have seen that people are interested in working uh, they want their de your details and start working with you uh, so thank you thanks thanks a lot for being here spending our time with us and answering your questions and explaining things kalyani as we wind yes. up uh, great pleasure hari thank you and uh, th this is really humbling and and i'm really happy uh, to be with you all and and thank you for calling me and i never expected this to be this interesting and uh, you are the i was saying you are the first uh, guest in our let's talk films to walk away with some prospective business all the others were inspiring <laughs> our students <laughs> i thank you for that and, uh, and i i look forward that you're working with young people and, and i should say we don't have just students here there are people who are interested uh, who are not our students who are interested in movies more and more coming in uh, for the let's talk films mm -hmm. talks uh, we have a telegram yeah. channel i have posted the link uh, in the chat box please join everyone ah, sure. and prince so i'll should... definitely be coming back to attend the future sessions yes and uh, hari please share the list of films that you have promised like we'll be discussing that in our film application goes uh because there we have very creative and an engagement we watch the classics and then we talk about it we discuss about it so there we can discuss these films as well okay. so thank you hari thanks a lot it has been a very engaging evening have a nice evening everyone